Welcome to episode 57 of the series of our security podcast for September 26, 2013, brought to you by the Center for Education and Research and Information Assurance and Security, or Sirius, at Purdue University. I'm Preston Wiley. I'm joined again by Mike Hill and Keith Watson, and this week is going to be what we'll call a a follow-up uh, week, where we're going to follow up with a few things we previously talked about and some stories relating to them. So, so maybe it should be referred to as a I told you so episode. Yeah, <laughs> but we're not, we're not especially on the first one. On the first slide. And the second one. <laughs> yeah, and possibly the third one. And possibly the third one. Maybe you have time for it. Right. Not me. Well, I've got the first one, and it probably comes as no surprise. Uh, we spent all of last week talking about this, the iPhone 5S fingerprint sensor, and uh, it has been cracked. <laughs> it did not take on. Uh, the uh, Chaos Computer Club of Germany uh, successfully cracked it, uh, and they claimed the prize as well. I, I, I was a little unclear on the prize. It looked like people donated or something, uh, certain prizes, and they, and they, they won it. They, they, they uh, were able to kind of cash in on their exploit. But what's interesting is that they didn't use some new novel approach to defeat the iPhone. They, they basically used a technique that's, uh, that's been documented as far back as 2004, uh, which essentially consisted of taking a high resolution photograph of the fingerprint. Um, it sounds like they inverted the images, they did a laser print of the image with a very thick toner setting. Uh, they used wood glue and uh, kind of dried it out on a, uh, and they peeled it off a latex sheet and then they uh, breathed on the surface of the phone and applied it. And one of the links we'll provide in the, in the article, they'll, they, they've got video of them essentially uh, kind of breaking in easily uh, to the device. So I, you know, based on what we were saying last week, it was all hypothetical, you know, a week ago, but it, it's now a reality. We, we did not think Apple had reinvented the wheel here. So, um, so I guess at this point, you know, since we kind of envisioned this would happen, you know, what are your guys' thoughts? Do you think people should not get the 5S? I mean, it does cost more. I mean, there's other features like a better processor. Should they not use uh, the, the fingerprint sensor, or should they just be aware that it's not that difficult to crack? <laughs> they should be aware that it, that it's easy to crack. I think if, it, if you're going to use it for unlocking your screen, that, you know, that's okay, but just be aware that if you lose control of your device, while that simplicity of opening it, opening it with a finger will get you in quickly, uh, it's not a completely safe way to protect your device. It might be better than using the pen code 0000. It probably would be better than that. Uh, <laughs> but um, I don't know. Can you actually do two? Well, it, it's interesting. I, you know, I, I'm just an IT developer, so I don't have the 5S. So I, I have not been able to test it. I do have iOS 7 now on my device. And the things I've read so far, it sounds like within the settings, you can. You can configure it, so you can say, I want to unlock the phone using my fingerprint. The other thing you can do is, I think you, there's an additional option here when you go to purchase apps. Typically, you have to enter your iTunes password. It sounds like there's a feature where you can say, use my fingerprint for that as well. So I, my recommendation would be, if that is truly how it works, to not, to, to, for those types, for those rare times when you're buying apps on the phone, type in your password. Don't, don't let the fingerprint do that alone. One of the other things I saw in the comments of these articles that I thought was interesting, it sounds like there's yet another feature where you can say, after a certain amount of time, the phone requires your PIN or passcode before unlocking with your fingerprint. Now that I find very interesting, but I don't have any like concrete examples, and I don't know for a fact if that's how it works, but if it is, that might be an interesting way of kind of shoring it up. I, I don't know um, what times are set. I don't know if by default it's just set to off, but it sounds like after a certain amount of time, like two hours, you could say, before you unlock the phone with my fingerprint, maybe put in my passcode first. So that might be one way Apple maybe trying to anticipate, you know, um, so you, I think the idea behind that would be, you know, you're using the phone constantly, you know, it's just unlocking, but, you know, if you put it away for a while, you left it 
you leave it on your desk and you forget it, like in a restaurant, you leave it at the table and someone picks it up later, you're like, oh, you know, fingerprints on the glass here, I, I saw this technique online, I know I'm going to get to this phone. You know, maybe they go through all those steps and they go to unlock it, to the end of the passcode first, and then you can unlock using the fingerprint. So, I, I don't have any way of confirming if that's how it works yet, but I think that's an interesting thing. Like anything else, look at the settings and see if there's, I think there's a certain amount of control that iOS provides you on how that fingerprint's used, and that's one of the things you probably want to look at. You probably don't want to let it be <coughs> the, keys of, the keys of the castle for that. Well, yeah, I mean, you probably are, if, if you're a home user, it's probably fine. Um, if you're an enterprise user and you, in the future, integrate application authentication or authorization through the fingerprint sensor, yeah, you might want to rethink that. Um, but look at, obviously, you yeah, look at the, the threats and what are the risks overall to using it. But, but be aware, there's a weakness here, so, and it can't be exploited. So. Yeah, it's, it's already improving. Not, and not to mention that it's a fingerprint ring here on a touch screen. So there's a there's ready a supply. Ready your fingerprint is right on it. that screen. Yeah, so. yeah, maybe if you register your, your pinky as your, your, uh, yeah. your fingerprint unlocking thing, and whereas you're using your other fingers for yeah. manipulation, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Probably not. Don't yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, I, well, I wonder about that too. What if you used a fingerprint on the other hand? You know, if you're right handed, you use your left hand for the fingerprint. Yeah, well, the, you still get your fingerprint one way or the other, yeah. so it's not a great solution. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, there is a bit of, you know, kind of meaning of which finger it is, but, you know, like when you, when you pick up a glass, you know, every fingerprint yep. on it. So if they just grab every fingerprint, eventually they're going to get the right one. And that's the other thing I'm really interested about, because iPhones had this thing for a long time. Delete the, you know, delete all, clear the device after 10 failed attempts. Well, how does that work with fingerprints? You know, does it give you, does it have the same sort of setting where if you fail to log in 10 times to your fingerprint, Will it erase all the data? Are, are there ways to configure that? You know, I think that's very interesting because it shouldn't just give you unlimited attempts with the fingerprint. Because sooner or later, someone with enough prints is going to pick up on the right one. Could be. Yeah. I'm sure we'll learn more. I mean, this has only been like a week since all of this has happened. So I'm sure in the coming weeks and months, we'll, we'll hear and see more. And it'll be interesting to see, you know, if Apple backs off its stance at all. But I, I would imagine that Apple probably understood all along that this was not going to be bulletproof. You know? But it, it is a kind of a cool feature and it's convenient. But highly secure, I, I don't think we can say that. I believe it was hacked within 48 hours. 48 hours. So. <laughs> yeah, using a technique. And it might have been hacked. It might have been hacked within a day, but they, well, they, they, they didn't award the. They didn't award they, it they, until after. The article that I think we saw was posted a few days after the iPhone came out. I so believe the computer uh, Chaos Computer Club had a blog post that was within the 24-hour period. Okay. Of so. so you called it. Then, uh, yeah. yeah. In the <coughs> cool. <coughs> well. Let's talk a little bit about Yahoo you now. Said, I told you so. oh, I've done that. Oh, what did you do? <laughs> you could <laughs> see <it>. that. <laughs> so, uh, you may recall a previous discussion related to Yahoo email addresses. Um, they were going to start recycling uh, accounts that had not been accessed within a certain amount of time. And the big issue at the time was the concern that those accounts, the original owners, uh, that had registered with other online services might, uh, those accounts might be acquired by somebody who may want to uh, find a back door, if you will, into resetting their password for other online services. So that was one concern. Also receiving email um, from somebody with old contact information uh, that might be sensitive in nature was also a concern as well because you never know when you have an email address that how many places you register that email account, uh, whether that be as a a login account, uh, password, or, I'm sorry, login account for a username for whatever service, or you sign up for newsletters, or you register it with your financial or healthcare providers. Periodically, they send you rather sensitive email. Um, so if you lost control of that email address, well, then the next person who grabs it might have fun with it. So uh, another article came out later 
to talk about uh, a new service that Yahoo's providing in addition to expiring these old accounts. And that is a way for you to basically select up to five IDs that you're interested in acquiring on a watch list. Um, and it, it would notify you when those IDs become available. Now this is great if you are an attacker and you want to monitor certain accounts to see if they expire and get recycled. And that would allow you then to use that account for nefarious purposes. So if you're willing to shell out almost $2, you can <laughs> put five IDs onto a watch list and start monitoring them. So obviously that's kind of problematic, but Yahoo's come back and said, well, no, 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 don't worry. We're going to do this securely, which, okay, how are you going to do it? They're talking about a 30-day period between the point when it's deactivated before it becomes available for recycling, and then they will send back, uh, anytime an email goes to that account, they're going to bounce back those emails and attempt to get them unsubscribed or deactivated from whatever email service it is that might be sending you know, newsletters or email alerts, those sorts of things. And they're also um, going to send notification for recycle accounts to various merchants, e-commerce sites, financial institutions, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, sounds interesting, but there's also a certain case where that's just not gonna work. Um, like we mentioned, the old contact data, um, they may not send any sort of email within that 30-day period. It might be much longer than that. Their contact data might be, you know, two or three years old. And when they do send a message, you know, that's still going to go through to the new owner. So this, you know, solves a couple things, but it didn't solve the bigger issue of, of recycling and, and all the issues associated with that. So. Um, I, and there's been reports of a few people that have already seen emails. Uh, and this sort of thing, and, and so clearly it's not a complete solution, but they're, Yahoo's claim is that, oh, we're doing our best to, to do this, but yet they've not answered this question of why do it in the first place? Why recycle these accounts? And so uh, they've talked about uh, this require, receive, valid, sense email header system to kind of minimize such occurrences of these sorts of problems, but I don't think they've solved it correctly and it's kind of problematic and now the service that allows you to set up a watch list is just enabling uh, various attackers so I think it's kind of interesting that they're still pursuing this route even though when it was announced a long time ago there was uh, some amount of disagreements to whether this was a good idea or not. Yeah well you know I think and I think we talked about this before I think Yahoo's reasoning behind this is we're, we're talking about them for one. I mean, Yahoo was kind of on the verge of just going away completely. That's true. You know, so I think the idea behind it was, and they mentioned the article, you know, if you're John Smith 4547123 at Yahoo, you can potentially become John Smith or Jay Smith or Smith at Yahoo. You know, much shorter, cooler email address. Um, you know, I think these are very valid concerns, but I don't know that I want to just totally bash Yahoo here because, you know, it is not good that people, you know, that those accounts, when they get recycled, yes, clearly, the, the new owner of that account is going to receive email that went to it. If Yahoo did not get all those deactivations done, which, in reality, that's a losing game. There's no way they're going to know. I mean, a lot of sites, you have a username and then a email address associated with it. Mm -hmm. Yahoo's not going to know that that email address <coughs> exists out there, but if someone goes to reset the password for that site, they enter the email address, it's going to be sent uh, to that account. So Yahoo's never going to be able to take care of all that. Um, but what I find interesting, you know, they referenced some folks that got information, you know, they're claiming, you know, they got, you know, information on last four digits of social security number, you know, they can get into Pandora account, Facebook account and stuff, you know, they're they're getting all of this personal identifiable information sent through the email. And and that's where I don't I'm not in favor of what Yahoo's doing, but I don't want to put all the blame on Yahoo. As we talked about, unless you're using encryption in email, there's really no security provided anyway. So we, that type of information shouldn't just be sent in plain text through email in the first place. Um, now, so, you know, it's sort of a culture shift, you know. Yes, these things are 
being sent to these Yahoo addresses, but that type of information should be have to be confirmed. You know, we, we should be careful about what we're sending an email in the first place. You know, we, we should, you know, and if it evens the conversation with someone, you know, and you're using an old address, you know, ask them, hey, how's it going? You know, do um, you remember where we worked 10 years ago? Uh, no, dude, I have no idea. Well, then I'm not talking to the guy I thought I was talking to from 10 no. years ago. No. 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 However, you know, you have an old email address for somebody, and that might be all the information you have for them. Right. You kind of uh, confirm it up front, and you assume it's going to stay the same person throughout the years. But is that a safe assumption? Is that a fair assumption? It Yahoo doesn't tell Yahoo changed it. But doesn't Yahoo have the right to? It's free. You get what you pay if for. That's true. You get what you pay for. Yahoo. You know, they, they stated, we're going to do this. You know, if you're not using these accounts, we're going to relinquish them. I think they said they had to have been inactive for more than a year. Uh, the, the one thing, the one flaw, the, the major flaw I see is they went to the 30 day. To me, I think they should have said, we're going to deactivate it and maybe make those accounts available a year later. <clears throat> if I had a yeah, Hotmail account 10 years ago, let's say, is that, do I still have that available to me today? I mean, now, I mean, yeah. do other companies just, once once somebody has chosen that account, they just never give it to anybody else ever again? Uh, as far as I know, yeah. Okay, well, from from uh, Yahoo standpoint, I can see where they're coming from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're trying to, to, you know, but 30 days is maybe too short. Maybe too they're short. they're, they're, they're attempting to drive new business from a rather stale email service that they have. Right. Not I a lot of people. Can, I care to other sites. Address. Not I, a lot of other people have still had Yahoo as their primary email server anymore. I changed my email address about three years ago, I think. Two or three, maybe longer than that. And I still find every once in a while a site that I haven't used in a long time that has my old email address. Yeah. So they crop up all the time. And I'm like, oh, geez, how do I reset this? I don't have, you know, I don't have my, <laughs> I don't have access to it. Yeah, but, you know, I, I guess I don't think it's unreasonable from the audience perspective to say, if you're not using this free service we're providing, you're going to take it away. <laughs> you know, because, no, 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 um, so now, but I understand the other side of the argument, because I have the same thing. I have email addresses. In fact, I probably have a few I created when I was in graduate school that are just lingering out there. They're probably going to get expired, because I only use them for a specific purpose. I don't even necessarily know where I use all those accounts. And that, that is problematic. That is a bit troubling. But some of that, I think, does fall back on me as well. It's like, I need to be responsible for the accounts I sign up for. When I sign up for a service, there's a lot of me. I don't read it all. I don't even know. They probably say in there, we have the right to revoke this service as we deem appropriate or something. If they don't, I imagine they do now. <laughs> you know, so, you know, the, the, the biggest thing to me is, um, just the short time, the short turnaround time. I don't think, you know, they're saying, well, we're, we're, we're deeming that a year is where it's safe to say, you know, if you haven't done anything in a year, you're not using the account. To me, I think they should almost say, and then we're going to see what happens with that account within the following year. I mean, that account's getting a lot of activity. It's like, well, wait a minute, maybe, you know. Well, what do you define as activity, though? I don't you know because spam. spam. I know because spam is a word. You can get 100 spam messages a day, if not more. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's a uh, it's an interesting experiment they're trying, but I, I think uh, I can understand where they're coming from. I mean, like I said, you know what? Here, here's the other side of the coin. You know, if Yahoo did nothing, Yahoo went away. What happens then? That 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 email address is just gone. <laughs> you know, so. How does that would really be sold like all the other intellectual property when those things happen? Right? I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. happened before. Where they just start away? going out of business and they sell their, their they, they customer sell, data. So. They, would, they would sell the Yahoo.com domain and someone else yeah. would maintain yeah. it. That creditors got paid off. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I, think, I think maybe the problem is that they tried to do so much. I mean, to me, it should be like, you know, you're responsible for this email address. Because what happens is, as soon as they say, well, we're going to deactivate it, we're going to unsubscribe you from all these things, then it becomes a matter of, you're going to miss something. And they're definitely going to miss something. There's no way they're going to be able to know every place that that email address has been used. 
the user probably does not know every place that email address has been used. So trying to tie up all those loose ends is impossible for Yahoo. Um, and, and you know, unfortunately, probably more stories like this are going to come out because it, it, it's bound to happen. And, and I almost wonder if it's a uh, when you claim. It, I wonder if it almost should be something like when you claim one of these recycled addresses, there's a certain amount of obligation on your part to act responsibly. You know, I don't know how you would enforce it. I don't know if we could do it. But <laughs> but, but maybe just getting the people's, you know, maybe, maybe the people that are on the fence be like, hey, you should be responsible. If you, you know, just like when you move. When you physically move from address to address, right, you put a forward in place and everything. But over time, you know, it lasts, what, six months, three months? You know, a year later, someone sends you Christmas cards from last year. And the forwarding address isn't there anymore. What's the new homeowner supposed to do? Hey, I'm just going to open this because it came to this address. Oh, look, there's a check. Well, I might as well cash it. Or there's cash here. I might as well take it. I mean, that there's, there's an ethical boundary in place there that says, no, you shouldn't do that. You should return it. And maybe Yahoo yeah, should have a service set that says, if you receive email that's not meant for you, bounce it back to us and say, hey, I'm getting this email. And, We'll take care of it for you. We won't make you contact the provider. We'll, we'll we'll take care of the head. That's interesting. We'll, we'll responsibly manage this. Uh, but, but isn't it similar? I mean, electronic mail is in a way similar to physical mail, and, and they have the same issues. You know, you can set up a forward for a certain amount of time, but then after that point, if someone inadvertent if they send it to the wrong address, yeah. there's a sort of social responsibility there that says, you know, if I get my neighbor's mail, I agree. Is they <laughs> added a, an ability for you to? Had a recycled address to say that's not for me. Yeah, make it easy. Yeah, make that it would easy. Be great. That would yeah, be make awesome. it a little. I don't know if you'd have anybody, you know, take advantage of that. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know either. But I think that would be a step yeah. God to take to say they're taking this seriously. Obviously, if they're cyber criminals, they're taking advantage of this, and we can assume there's probably some that are very interested. They're not going to click that button. But other folks would probably say, hey, I I don't want to see this. I want this. My wife, for example, when we were in graduate school, someone kept signing up for stuff under her email address because they were very similar. And she had to like keep saying, stop sending me this stuff. I don't want it. You know, and it, it's something similar. And Yahoo should make it easy to say, I don't want, you know, this information. I want you to I want you to take care of it. You gave me this recycled address. I appreciate that. Now make this other stuff go away. I don't want it. Because I think I think the vast majority of people don't want it. They don't want to see it. They, you know, they don't want to see that information. And when it lands in their inbox, they really have no way of sending it where where it needs to go. Right? Not that Yahoo would either, but Yahoo would have a, a better chance maybe of tracking it down or at least contacting the provider and saying, you know, don't send that anymore. That address has changed. All right, I'm gonna <laughs> summarize for our goal with one sentence. Okay. <laughs> All right, that's good. Java is still insecure, and you still shouldn't use it. Okay. <laughs> and do not install the asset toolbar. <laughs> do not do it. Well, actually, just don't run Java. Yeah. If you're forced and you have to, don't install the asset toolbar. Make sure it's updated. But that's still like it. Any any comment? Any other comments on that? I think they covered it. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, Mike, Keith. I'm Preston Wiley. Uh, have a safe and secure day.